Daisy. Um, that interview has been called a train wreck, a complete disaster. But, you know, on the other hand, I'm also conscious that the British media also want Prince Andrew to fail very badly. There's a pack attack going on. So, independent judgment. How do you think he went? Well, ultimately, Andrew, I think the interview was a huge mistake. This was a, this was a very bad decision by the royals to allow this to go to head. And, and in fact, um, Prince Andrew's publicist thought the same thing. There was a gentleman hired in September specifically for the purpose of rehabilitating Prince Andrew's public image who said to the prince, you should not be doing this interview, but they did it anyway. And because of that, this publicist actually resigned since his advice was not taken. But he agreed, certainly, that this could be perceived as a train wreck. I mean, there was absolutely no way in the world that Prince Andrew was going to come out of this looking in any way favourable. The, you know, the situation and the accusations are just too, too sordid. Um, the, the circumstance is just too extraordinary. And aside from anything else, we know what the cultural zeitgeist is like, is like at the moment. It's absolutely relentless on these things. And as you mentioned quite rightly, Andrew, the British media was determined for Prince Andrew to fail. There was no way he was going to get any kind of fair trial by media. So um, I don't think he came out of this looking any better. I think there were parts of the interview where he sounded reasonably sensible. I mean, he had quite a clear explanation um, when tipped of the night that this girl um, alleged he'd slept with her. He had quite a clear, I guess you'd call it alibi. He was taking his daughter to a pizza party. But then there was a other point in the interview that were just ghastly, like when he was talking about that that infamous photograph of himself with his arm around um, the girl who has accused him and he was saying things like I, I don't think that photograph was taken in the way that people think it was and that was my face yes it was me but that might not have been my hand I, I, I mean it was just strange all over the place stuff like that which did not do him any favors so I think in future Please, royal family, listen to the expert PR people that you hire because this did not go well for Prince Andrew. Yeah, well, I think if you're going to do a high-risk interview like that, you need to do some preparation and offer some yeah. evidence, some lines that, you know, the pizza thing, for instance, uh, where's the receipts, where's the camera footage, where's something, you know, to, to say where he was. And uh, as for the hinting that the photo was doctored, which uh, some have done, you know, wouldn't you have in all these months spent whatever you had, and he's a fairly rich guy, to get photo experts to show that it was doctored or at least, you know, cast some aspersions on it. But none of that. I just thought it was uh, quite arrogant. Uh, he might be innocent, but, uh, boy, he didn't look it, I'll tell you that much. Daisy, uh, Black Eyed Pea star uh, Will I Am uh, has accused the Qantas flight attendant of being a racist towards him on a flight to Sydney. In fact, he also named her and sent a picture of her to his 12 million followers. Is that cool? No, that's completely uncool. It was, it was <laughs> to, say, to say the least, it was totally inappropriate for him to name and defame her heartily on Twitter for his 12 million Twitter followers to abuse. And then, you, you won't believe it, Andrew, a couple of tweets later, he was prompted to the hate that his followers were sending this poor woman and had the hide to say, oh, please, everyone, don't abuse her. I don't approve of hate. Well, if you don't approve of mm. hate, then why did you post her name in the first place, for goodness sake. And then when called on that, he said, look, if I were rude to a journalist or to a fan, that I would absolutely be publicly criticised. And it's like, well, that's because Will I Am is a public figure. You know, that that's what he does. This was a, a private citizen who's been accused of something um, extremely serious. Racism is a very serious, awful thing to be accused of. Now, as for whether she was racist, I highly doubt that this is a situation of a white woman targeting people of color on the plane purely for the color of their skin. My understanding of the situation is that there was a misunderstanding um, which involved um, one of the Black Eyed Peas guitarist um, was not allowed to take his guitar onto the plane so he took it off, he came back on again still with the guitar and said oh another flight attendant told me I could take it on. There was a disagreement. Will I Am was caught in the middle with noise cancelling 
having headphones on, one thing led to another and it all got quite um, belligerent. But according to passengers who saw these altercation, they said there, there were no racist words used, but it just seemed to be that uh, she was targeting her frustrations only at the people of colour on the plane. Now, whether that's because it just happened to be the people of colour who were not following the instructions or perhaps or whether or not this woman was a racist, I'm more likely to go with the former. But I think, Andrew, that this situation is a little bit of a don't you know who I am from um, these celebrities who might just be a little bit annoyed that they're being treated like ordinary people. We had a similar incident, shall we say, with um, athlete Ben Simmons earlier in the year, that uh, infamous incident where he claimed racism because oh. he and his friends were ID'd <laughs> outside yeah. of a nightclub. So, um, yeah, I think there's a little bit more to it than just so-and-so is racist. Uh, just quickly, uh, rugby superstar Ralph Lau sacked for quoting the Bible against gays. Uh, he said they should repent. Now he's been filmed saying that bushfires were God's punishment and we should all repent. Here he is in his church. What you see right now out in the world, it's only a little taste of what God's judgments come. It's not even, not even a big thing. And now the news now are saying that these bushfires are the worst they've ever seen in Australia. Worst. They haven't even seen anything. And you, we look back at what God done to Sodom and Gomorrah. And rain, fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed that city because of the sin that they were living in. Now, Daisy, the Prime Minister said those comments were appallingly insensitive. They may well have been. But I just don't get the critics who say, well, see, uh, Rugby Australia's right to sack him. I mean, he's given his opinion. No one's hurt. Do you see the problem here? Uh, look, I, I, don't, I don't see why this has to have any any connection whatsoever to Rugby Australia sacking him. This isn't an, in, an Instagram post. This is something else that he has said. But I think what's being lost sight of here is that uh, this wasn't in Israel grandstanding or virtue signalling on, on Twitter or, or on Instagram. He's certainly not doing an Adam Bant, which is uh, politicising the bushfires for his own personal gain. He's not one of those greenies. This, this stuff happened at his church. He was giving a sermon. He was privately practising <laughs> his religion amongst people who all agreed with him. He wasn't projecting his that, views Daisy. onto non-believers. You know, uh, he, he, exactly he, he right. was, he was big... Church. Yeah. Oh, look, there would have been, what, 20 people in the church, you know, and if there hadn't mm. been, uh, that, you know, you know f filmed and disseminated, no one would know. I guess uh, the answer nowadays is we've got to put a uh, camera and a microphone in every single church in the country, <laughs> maybe even every <laughs> living room in the country, and then catch out people and really go them. I mean, really, give us a break. <laughs> Daisy Cousins, thank you so much mm. indeed for your time.